Death Valley Days. Howdy, folks. I'm the old ranger, and I have another interesting true story for you about the historic Death Valley country. What happens when a sinner and a real smart one joins up with a band of saints? Saints with a capital S. That's the situation in the story you're about to hear. A story I call Miracle of the Sea Dog. It is the first week of April, 1847. In the back room of a lodging house in the bustling frontier town of St. Joseph, Missouri, James Reeves is busily at work behind locked doors making counterfeit banknotes. Who is it? Sheriff Mack. All right, come on. What's the idea? Open up! Evening, Sheriff. What a night. To what do I owe the pleasure of this visit from the law? Heard you were looking for a team and wagon, is that right? I sure am. Do you know of one? Wasn't thinking of skipping town, was you? You will have your little joke now, Sheriff. All right, Reeves. Ain't got nothing pinned on you yet, Reeves. So if you want this outfit, it'll cost you 800 bucks. 800 bucks? Brigham Young has bought up everything in sight. Brigham Young? He's leading his first party west from winter quarters up the river to the promised land. When? How soon? Day after tomorrow they leave. Hey, maybe you'll be thinking of joining them. Yes, by gosh, I will. Hey, you must be in an old fired hurry to leave town. A slick article like you take it up with the latter day saints. Oh, lay off me, Sheriff. I'm in a hurry to get west. All right, Sonny. Just fork over eight hundred dollars for this wagon team and you can leave town with my blessings. Oh no, no, no. Good hard cold cash on the barrel head. Coin of the realm. None of those pretty picture papers of yours, Sonny. Give me some time to get the money. Sure. Daylight tomorrow morning. I'll have it. Yeah. Take your tools with you. You don't think I'd leave them here for you to use, do you, Sheriff? You know, boy, it makes me feel real good to consign you and your considerable talents to Brother Brigham. Let's see what he'll make out of you. James Reeves? Yeah. I spoke to Brigham Young. He says it's all right so long as you provide your own food. I'm well stocked. Because we've got just enough to last. Measured down to the last pound of flour. Uh, where is it you're bound for? Uh, California? Oregon? That is between Brigham Young and God. Even you don't know? I am only an elder in the church. You are an outsider. Oh, I trust I won't be regarded as too much of an outsider. Or even though I haven't been baptized. As yet. Then you are interested? I certainly am. Good. You can fall in line anywhere with your wagon. Uh, thank you, Elder Snow. Is that farm implement you have here under this tarpaulin? Uh, no. Oh. I was hoping it was. We're taking along all we've got room for. Seeds, too. So that we can start planting as soon as we find the promised land. You'll be expected to do your share of work. We're letting you go along because you've got a good right arm. I've got two good arms. For the service of the Lord. Amen. Uh, amen.
It will be your duty to keep a record of the distance covered each day by counting the revolutions of your wagon wheel. And no guesswork either. On the basis of your reports, we will establish mileposts along the way for the benefit of those who follow. James Reeves. Oh, me? You will gather buffalo chips. Buffalo chips? To use as fuel for our campfires. Look, Elder, that's the lowest job in the whole outfit. If there is any trade at which you are proficient, name it. I'm a... Oh, uh, I'd be very glad to uh, pay somebody to do the work for me. Put your money away. Every man in this company works for the common good. You've had your orders. It's what you think. <laughs> What's it worth to you to take over my job? I've already got a job. What about you? He has a job, too. Everybody has. Yeah, but look, here's your chance to make a little extra money. Money has no place with us. But it must have. What do you do when you want to buy things? Food, clothing. The barter system works very well. Barter? Reeves? Get a basket and start gathering fuel. Use for dyes. Uh, this is a uh, fuel. You've never pioneered before. I can tell by your actions. No, uh, I'm a city man. What line of work? Uh, printing. Books. How wonderful. And um, general stuff. Have you read the works of our prophet Joseph Smith? No, uh, I'm afraid not. Or the discourses of uh, Brigham Young? But he doesn't have to. He can hear him preach. If he attends the meetings. Would you like to? There's a hymn sing this evening. Why, well, thank you. I should be delighted. You weren't singing. I didn't know the words. I'll teach them to you. When? Tomorrow, when we make camp. I'll be there with my best voice. The Spirit of God, like a fire, is burning. The latter-day glory begins to come forth. Now repeat after me. You have the longest eyelashes I've ever seen. Why, Brother James, you're being irreverent. I'm sorry. How did you ever happen to join this company? Uh, I was in a hurry to get west. What are you going to do when you get there? Make a fortune. You're very sure of yourself, aren't you? Well, I've already made quite a pile. You ever seen money? Come on, touch it. It won't bite you. I love to see you laugh. You have a dimple that comes and goes. Why, I believe you're flirting with me. You do it with every girl. You're the first Mormon, I swear. <laughs> What's the matter? Well, folks claim you Mormons have horns. Well, look and see. Sister Judith. Brother Lorenzo. I... I... I was just teaching Brother James the words of our hymns. 
There's work to be done. The evening meal to prepare. And fuel needed for the fires to cook it. There are no buffalo along this part of the trail. I've looked. Then find a substitute. taking this cut through the mountains. I thought we were sticking to the Oregon Trail. We're not going to Oregon. Well, where are we going? To the promised land. And where's that? The Lord is directing us. You don't know. We're just wandering around through the wilderness. Brigham Young will recognize the place. Then I'll go and ask him. Brigham Young is sick, stricken with mountain fever. He can talk to no one. <laughs> the canyon. We're on a high plateau. Off there is the west. It is enough. This is the place we will settle in that valley. Here on this campsite, we will build the city of Zion. According to these plans which I have drawn up, to the north, between the two creeks, will stand the temple of our God on a lot of 40 acres adorned with trees. The city will be divided into blocks of 10 acres each, with eight lots in a block of one and a quarter acre each. Each man will be apportioned a lot. The streets will be wide. No house will be permitted to... You fellows don't need a whole acre and a quarter to build a house on. Take an acre of it off your hands. The same offer goes to you. No man will be suffered to cut up his lot and sell a part of it to speculate out of his brethren. Every man must keep his lot whole. For the Lord hath given it to us without price. The same is true of the land outside the city. It will be farmed cooperatively and neither bought nor sold. It doesn't look like anything would grow in this soil. Dry as a bone. I thought the promised land would be cool and green. There must be springs. There's certainly water up there in those mountains. And the man who owns the water rights will make a fortune. I'll ride up there the first chance I get and locate. Take up the timber rights, too. Behold, the future lumber king of the Salt Lake Valley. Ah, oh, there you are. I was looking for you. You've been assigned to a party to go up into the mountains to cut timber. Timber? For the stockade. Later on for houses. We'll need plenty. Well, man, what are you gawping at? Would you mind telling me who got there first? Why, the Lord, of course. It's him we have to thank for the trees, the streams. We'll bring water down, too, for irrigation. We? The Mormon Church. I see. Back. A receipt for my service is cutting timber, which I am about to present in exchange for food. You Mormons certainly fix it so nobody ever gets rich. Food is worth its weight in gold at this point. Brigham Young put us on strict rations when he left. He's gone? Back east. To bring out another party in the spring. He made some other things rather plain, too, before he left. 
A single woman has no place in a community like this. I uh, quite agree. I must select a husband. That's easy. Marry me. But you're not of our faith. What difference does that make? I love you and you love me. But you don't understand. Our laws are very strict. All right, then. We'll move on to California. I've got plenty of money, and there's lots more where this came from. Why do you always think you can buy whatever you want? It isn't a question of money. But these are my people. I belong here. How can we get around them, then? There's only one way. You join the church. Me? Become a Mormon? Never. I didn't realize you felt that strongly about it. Sorry, but I just can't go along with all these things you Mormons believe in. These signs and miracles and revelations. They're ridiculous. Then I'll marry someone who does. Who? Not that old blue-nosed brother Lorenzo. He's old enough to be your father. Judith, you couldn't love him. Brother Lorenzo's a fine man. And I respect him. You don't know anything at all about love. But I could teach you. How dare you, you, you infidel! I hate you, I despise you. I don't ever want to see you again. You won't. I'm packing up and pulling out of here today. Shaking the dust of you Mormons off my feet forever. All I need is enough supplies to last me till I get to Fort Bridger. I'll pay you well. We don't want your money. Stop telling me that. This once you've got to take it. But we do need you. We're facing privations, hunger, dangers we know nothing about. We need all the help we can get till this year's crops are in. Then I have no choice. You've ridden along on our coattails this far, Brother Reeves. You can't run out on us now. To me, she ought to be on her feet by now. These low fevers hang on. She's been sick all winter. Three times I've posted our marriage bans. And each time she's had a relapse. You can't go against nature. That soup you're making ought to put strength into her. It has a powerful smell. It's a piece of buffalo hide quilt. I scraped the hair off of and boiled up. Ah, Reeves. I uh, brought you some more firewood. Thank you very much. You're just the fellow I wanted to see, Brother James. What for? The church has given me a consignment of lumber at last to build my new house. Our new house. And your services to help build it. My services? I'd like to get started at once so it'll be ready to move into after we're married. Why the devil should I build your house? You haven't a word to say about it, brother, as long as you're a member of this community. The lumber will be delivered to my lot tomorrow morning. I'll see you there. <laughs> Brigham Young will be gratified with what we've accomplished during his absence. A score of babies born, more than a hundred houses built, crops planted, and first grain heading up. Just in time to save us all from starvation. I knew we'd make out. Look, there's another. Look. The sky's full of them. Quick, to the field, before they attack our craft. Round up, everybody. Tell them to bring rakes, shovels, anything they can fight with.
Where is that god of yours now? Who brought us to this promised land? You mustn't lose faith, Jim. I never had it. How right I was. A lot of good your preaching and praying and singing has done you. It's the only thing left for us now. Pray. Sister and brethren, let us all unite in prayer. Is it crazy stopping to pray at a time like this? Oh, fool. Almighty God, look down upon these thy children, we beseech thee. Hear our prayer. We have worked hard and endured much, O oh Lord, to build a kingdom here where we could worship thee according to our lights and preach thy gospel. Judith. You look so tired, so worn. Pray, Jim, pray. Rid us of these garments, Lord. Even as thou didst rid the land of Egypt of its plague of locusts in the days of Moses. Save this land. Don't let these people starve. Myself, but for her, O oh Lord. Amen. We ask it in the name of thy Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 See God. They can't be. Here, in the middle of the desert? They're coming down. Look. They're after the crickets. They're devouring them. They're eating them. They're eating them. It's a miracle. Yes, straight from heaven. No man could live through such an experience and not come to believe. If it's done that for you, then it was worth all we went through. The first time in my life I ever prayed for something, instead of trying to buy it. You've come a long way, Jim. You don't know how far. I've always been a fake. I don't believe that. It's true. Instead of going after the real thing, I settle for imitations. Cheap counterfeit. I'm real. Judith, is there any hope for me? Miracles have happened. In Temple Square, Salt Lake City, is this monument to a seagull the only monument in the United States in honor of a bird. It's a state crime out there to kill a seagull, for to this day, whenever the scourge of crickets threatens, the seagulls are ready and waiting to save the crops of Utah.